and that is Sonic Lady, who's being led off out of the paddock. I'm afraid that probably means that she's spread a plate or something has gone amiss. I very much hope that it's something unimportant. In fact, I see Bruff uh, hurrying off to find out what it is. Uh, in all probability, uh, she's spread a plate. And, and uh, there's Moonlight Lady, uh, one who'll certainly like the ground. Paul Cook rides Moonlight Lady. You see all the jockeys uh, getting off. Uh, because they obviously realised there was going to be a delay. This was the hardest work to the Phillies in this race last year, Moonlight Lady. She had nine runs. She's incidentally uh, one of the only two who's uh, <coughs> not... Uh, she is in the 1,000, but not in the Oaks. Uh, <coughs> Moonlight Lady ran well all over the place last year, won the precocious national stakes at Sandown, and then ran very well over a mile in the May Hill, just uh, beaten by Midway Lady. And last time out in the pre-Marcel Boussac at Lawshaw, uh, she got very badly interfered with. So that's a Moonlight Lady. I think some of the others are leaving the paddock, but there's Meteoric, uh, Dick Hearn's runner. Well, lightness showed for a long way, but uh, faded out. So no evidence yet that well stills the horses are absolutely fit. Number eight, the Mount of Willie Carson, Meteoric. So the horses uh, coming out onto the track for this, the Nelgrin Stakes. And the first one we look at, that's Bambalona in the blue jacket, white epaulets. Then behind her is Bastara, chocolate jacket, gold sleeves, spot the nose band on that one. Black jacket with a white cap, white chevron on it, Pat Edery, Embla, number one. She has to conceive weight, don't forget. And then we'll see the one behind her, that one is the rank outsider, Mrs. Waddy Love, in the yellow jacket, brown hoop sleeves. And then behind her is the white jacket, red striped sleeves of Ala Malik. And uh, as we watch Ala Malik come out, this is how they bet. Ala Malik, the 5 to 2 second favourite. Sonic Lady heads the market at 11 to 8. Embla, 7 to 2 from 3 to 1. Lodi Safi City at 12 to 1 and 16 to 1 bar 4. Well, I'm just at the back here by the saddling boxes, and uh, it's quite a routine deal that uh, Sonic Lady has spread a plate. The uh, blacksmith farrier is in there with her now. She'll be a couple of minutes, but it is an absolutely routine deal, and she seems completely calm and composed. The only worry sometimes is they fret a bit while they're led away, but there's no problem with that at the moment. She looks calm and composed. We'll have a closer look when she comes out. Well, of course, it's all very well for Bruff to call it a routine deal. For the blacksmith, it's quite nervy work because you only have to put a nail an inch out of place uh, and there's real trouble. But there's uh, the obvious danger to Sonic Lady, Embla, uh, cruising down to the post for Pat Henry, going down really well. Uh, I've got Jim McGrath with me. Jim, she has to give Sonic Lady five pounds. That's quite a task. Yes, the, the important thing is how fit she is, and by all accounts, she according to the work watchers, will be uh, the less forward of the two. And with the five pounds to concede as well, and the fact that uh, when she ran on soft ground, good to soft ground at Ripon last year, she didn't appear to run up to her best, um, she's certainly got a stiff task on. Would you uh, consider the change in ground enough to make a difference? Well, I think Luca Kumani advanced other reasons after she'd won there at five to one on and struggled very hard to win. Um, she wasn't at her best that day. But certainly the form in the book, her form in the book, indeed most of the Phillies' form in the book, John, is on fast ground and we haven't got fast this afternoon. We may well get a shock. It rained quite hard and there's a definite cut in the ground. Uh, as you say, it may well uh, change the bowling altogether. Uh, Embla certainly looks, I absolutely have the greatest respect for George Robinson's uh, advice. But Embla looks uh, really well. Uh, she's hanging her coat. Uh, you can't see quite too, too well on that picture, but I can promise you she has. Uh, and uh, it'll be very, very interesting to see how much difference the going and the weight makes. That's Embla. Here's John McCrick.
Well, Embler in shot there, and those of you who followed the front page splash of the Sporting Life and backed her will be amazed at her price. She's now a five to one chance Embler. Some papers even had her in as favorite, certainly second favorite. The bookmakers right round the course are convinced that the one filly who will not win is Embler, and they're trying to pushing her out, trying to get money for her. The only question now is whether some of the offices, frightened at this opposition to the Cheveley Park winner, will come in and back her. And just to remember, just to remind you, no horse has won the Cheveley Park and the Nell Gwyn. Sonic Lady coming back into the paddock now. Sonic Lady is out to six to four from five to four. The reason for that, the strength behind Ala Malik. Now, it was hard to find a newspaper tipster all day who had gone for Ala Malik. The punters don't listen to the hacks. And to a man here, they're very strong on Ala Malik. It's been the best back filly in the race. 10 to 1 Lady Sophie. In place, it's 20 to 1 bar. But the feature here, the ferocious opposition to Embler. Sonic Lady, uneasy still. And there she is. The blacksmith has uh, done his work. There's absolutely no reason to believe it's had any effect on Sonic Lady. We've only seen her once when she came out in the Blue Seal Stakes at Ascot, which is for uh, comparative newcomers. She absolutely slaughtered them, showed tremendous speed. It's true that she did come off the straight line towards the end of that race, but that was just slight greenness. She's by Noreev, who of course was disqualified after winning the 2,000 guineas here, out of an Owen Anthony mare, so it's not absolutely certain that uh, she'll stay six furlongs. She certainly wasn't tiring towards the end of Ascot that day. Nevertheless, as I've told you, there is a line through warm welcome. Jim, just tell us about that, which give, appears to give Alan Malik a good chance. Well, warm welcome um, ran against Alan Malik at Salisbury, making her race course debut. And she gave warm welcome a bigger beating there than um, Sonic Lady did when uh, warm welcome ran at Ascot against her. But it's worth stressing, Stay of course, again, that Andrew. on her first, it was warm welcome's first appearance at Salisbury and Sonic Lady's first appearance at Ascot. And I wouldn't pay uh, too much to the relative merits of those performances in trying to assess the two fillies here this afternoon. What I do think is a question mark against Sonic Lady is stamina, not so much her pedigree, John, her style of racing, or the, the only time we saw her, she looked very free, tremendous pace. Will she last home? That's what we want to find out this afternoon. Mm -hmm. That's uh, what I wish I'd asked Michael Stout. I only did ask him, really, how he thought she'd done. But anyway, let's hear the trainer's view. Yeah, well, Sonic Lady's a filly with a lot of speed, and the damn side of the pen pedigree has an, an enormous amount of speed in it as well. She is good. Um, but my fear has always been her stamina because of the speed she does have. And we could have done without this rain. It's pretty soft out there, so we'll have to see. Well, Michael, just a little bit worried about the ground. Uh, she's going down perfectly kindly for Walter Swinburne. Number 13, Sonic Lady. And Bambalona in uh, <coughs> the colors of uh, Mr. McIntyre. Well, uh, let's see her winning at Kempton. It was the bonus print Sirenia stakes. And uh, what a fine performance from Bambalona. She's just coming uh, to take up the lead there. Uh, on this side, three off the rails. Bambalona coming, coming away. And from, from the moment she hits the front, uh, she goes further and further ahead. Uh, Bambalona drawing drawing clear. Miss Crown was second there, and of course that form isn't really uh, first rate. Nevertheless, you couldn't take it away from Bambalona. Uh, she beat Miss Crown very comfortably indeed, but, and it is a big but, because next time out, uh, Bambalona was well beaten behind Embler in the Tassels Cheveley Park. So on that form, uh, it could be a surprise if she can win. Let's have a look at the betting now. And Bambalona is 20 to 1 from 16 to 1. Sonic Lady out to 6 to 4 favourite. Ella Malik at 5 to 2. Embla now a 5 to 1 chance, open up at 3s. Lady Sophie at 10s. Moonlight Lady 20 to 1. And Meteoric is 25 to 1 from 20s. Ustara also at 25 to 1. And Mrs. Wally Love, the 100 to 1 outsider, they all show. And there is the possible danger. Alan Malik, ridden by Greville Starkey. This, as I told you, is a filly by Ahonora, who was himself a sprinter, but has been a great success since he went to the stud. Uh, and, as you've also been told, Alan Malik 
uh, beef warm welcome uh, easy, more easily than Sonic Lady did. So that there's a real chance that uh, this filly of Frankie Burr's might spring, spring a surprise. Do you think, do you think she looks uh, as though she'd done well, Jim? She was one of the ones I did see before I came up to join you, John. I thought she looked very well in her coat. She's a big, strong filly. You'd expect the race to suit her. I saw her race uh, at Salisbury, and indeed her debut at Salisbury on was the more significant one. And she came very, very late. It's a stiff six furlongs at Salisbury. She didn't actually get in front till uh, 20, 30 yards from the post. You'd think she'd need all of seven furlongs this year. Uh, she's a little bit of an unknown quantity, and we don't know how good she is. And how about the ground? Well, the ground, we're in the, the, the same question applies to her as applies to Sonic Lady. We don't know. She may be better, she may be worse. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. Let's hear now from John McCree. No strength yet behind Sonic Lady. It's now out to 13 to 8 from 6 to 4. It opened at 5 to 4. Ala Malik holding very strong. Early bits and pieces, 7 to 2, 130. Carpet, 3 to 1. 5 to 2, though. 1 or 2 bookmakers are calling 11 to 4. Ala Malik. I spoke to one puncher who's a pretty big gambler himself. He took Carbit 3 to 1 Embla this morning. He cannot believe it went out to 5 to 1, and he's pressed it up. In other words, he once thought 3 to 1 was a good price. He can't believe his luck with 5. He's pressed it up 9 to 2, but he's the only man around here who fancies Embla. In places 11 to 1 Lady Sophie. It's 20 to 1 Bar the 4. The best of those is probably Moonlight Lady. Bits of beast each way. For number 9, Moonlight Lady at 20 to 1. But there's no doubt here, the news still the opposition to Embla, the weakness comparatively of the favourite Sonic Lady, the confidence behind Ala Malik. Well, I don't know how much confidence there is behind Lady Sophie, but she's a really nice filly, just sweating up a little bit, which is a bit of an achievement today, because um, it's certainly not hot. This filly by Brigadier Gerard, who, of course, uh, produced a really good filly last year in Ever Genial, Apart from that, his best uh, produce had been like Cavalry of St. Ledger winner. But uh, Lady Sophie has only won at Yarmouth, but mind you, Henry Cecil very often uh, sends even his best horses to Yarmouth. So that is not conclusive evidence by any means that he doesn't think a lot of her. Uh, Jim, uh, the form doesn't really tell us much. No, she's just a promising filly. The one thing, the point you've made, John, is that she's trained by Henry Cecil, who's so many uh, good fillies, knows exactly what's required to win this race and the guineas, and if she weren't up to the standard of running reasonably well, uh, she wouldn't be in the field. A quick shout from John McCreary. But make her sniffing the possibility of a result. In other words, an outsider is going to win. Bambalona has been back, number three, from 25 to 1 into 16 to 1. Bits and pieces still for Moonlight Lady into 16 to 1, 13 to 8 the field still. Meteoric being pushed in there. Lovely Munning scene of the starters against the skyline. Well, at least uh, the weather isn't bad as it was when hail was coming down just before the, uh, the first race. But uh, that's the last one to go in, Bastara. So over to you, Rolly Gilbert. Thanks, John. Yes, Bastara. The last but one was Sonic Lady. This is the rank outsider, Mrs. Wadilove, Gay Kellaway. But that looks like it. Yes, and away they go. And uh, Ala Malik gets a good fast start up towards the outside. This one unbeaten, as is the favourite. But uh, going with her up the centre is the favourite Sonic Lady. And nearest to us is Mrs. Wadilove. Those are the first three in the first furlong. And they're being followed by Meteoric on the near side and Lady Sophie running fast. After these first five come Embla. And the back markers at the moment are Babylona and Bastara. They've just about completed the first quarter of a mile in the Nelgwyn Stakes, and it's Sonic Lady, the favourite now, who's pulled away up to the front. Sonic Lady and Mrs. Wadilove still there on the outside is the second favourite, Arla Malik. And with just uh, half a mile to go, it's over to Graham. And Sonic Lady certainly running free enough in the centre of the track, chased at this stage by Meteoric. Mrs. Wadilove up on the outside. Arla Malik next to the rails, but now Sonic Lady settled. They've got just over two and a half the race. Sonic Lady from Meteoric who moved best to post, coming up to challenge her now. Arla Malik next to the rails, behind these Embla with the white cap switched to the with a late one coming on the outside. Two furlongs left to race in the Nelguin Stakes, and Sonic Lady goes for home from Arla Malik in second. Behind these comes Lady Sophie with the red cap. After these, Meteoric fading at Embla, and Sonic Lady really coming home in style. Arla Malik.
Sonic chasing her in second place. Inside the final furlong, and Sonic Lady putting daylight between herself and her two nearest rivals, with Lady Sophie and Alan Malik. But it's Sonic Lady impressively up towards the line. Sonic Lady is the winner. Sonic Lady, the winner of photo for second between Lady Sophie and Alan Malik. A gap of some six to eight lengths to Embla, then Bastara, then Bambalona, then Mrs. Wadi Love, Meteoric faded right away, and so too did Moonlight Lady. And so the result of this Nelgrin stakes, it's a win for number 13, Sonic Lady, owned by Sheikh Mohammed, trained at Newmarket by Michael Stout, and ridden by Walter Swinburne. She ran freely early on, then she settled, but by gum she came home. Well, a photo for second place between, I think we'll find, Lady Sophie, owned by Mr. Jim Joel, also trained here at Newmarket, and uh, there is uh, Lady Sophie in the black jacket nearest to us. For my money, she's second. On the far side, for my money, third horse home is Ala Malik. But this was a very impressive performance indeed by our winner, a daughter of Nureyev, Sonic Lady, who maintains her unbeaten record. Just one run she had last year. There she won her, came home in style. And this 13 to 8 favorite winner of this Nelgrin Stakes has, I think, won a most creditable race because for my money I must say I was a little bit anxious as they run through the first two two and a half to three furlongs because she didn't really settle and I feared that she might just burn herself up and as the pre-race uh, worries were over her pace and her style of racing well she's answered her critics in the best way possible let's see her win again it's, be, it's been suggested to me that I should say she came home oh so sharp but I'll refrain from that Nevertheless, she is extremely impressive. I agree with Graham. Up to this stage, you couldn't be absolutely certain whether Walter Swinburne had got her settled or not. But he turns out to have saved up quite enough energy for the last two furlongs because there is never any sign of weakening. From this moment, uh, Sonic Lady goes more or less steadily away from Alan Malik and Lady Sophie, who are the only two really able to keep within hail of her. Uh, water just scrubbing away with hands and heels, never any really need to feel for his whip, and I don't think you'll ever see that gap getting any narrower. Lady Sophie's run really well, coming to challenge Ala Malik for second place. Uh, Lady Sophie maybe is gaining a little bit up the last uphill 100 yards, but it wasn't because Sonic Lady was coming back. She's won really well. Jim. I was impressed by that. Were you? Yes, very impressed. She did it really well. We were all here to, to knock her. We said that the ground possibly, the, the, the trip, and she's come through them with flying colour. She's added another string to her bow, and if anything, showed herself uh, better than perhaps uh, Michael Stout even dreamed of. She's always been in command. At halfway, one wondered, John, whether she might run a little bit, have run a little bit too freely, but that proved not to be the case. And the only doubt now is, is the possibility another furlong may be too far for her. But she's very, very good indeed. Embler makes no show, really, hangs out towards the middle of the course and uh, is done with by this stage. She may have needed the race. Lady Sophie and Alan Malik both run very well. There's absolutely no disgrace uh, to be where they are, but equally there's absolutely no doubt about the superiority of Sonic Lady. Over this distance, at least, she's a hell of a lot better than the other fillies here today. In the 1,000 guineas, we'll see. Sonic Lady, the 13 to 8 favourite. And she is the 14th favourite in 25 runnings of the Nell win to win, and the distance is three lengths and ahead. The second filly has just come in, that's Lady Sophie at 10 to 1. The third, Ala Malik, went off at 11 to 4. And Sonic Lady. It's certainly the first blow in the battle of the racing daily front pages for Adrian Cook of the Racing Post. He went all out for Sonic Lady, while his opposition, Jeff Lester and the Sporting Life, went for Embla. And there's no doubt if you came racing, if you were at Newmarket today, you would have sensed, you would have felt the one filly who wasn't going to win was Embla. She finished fourth at 9-2 to two for returning there. The winner, Sonic Lady, 13-8. to eight. That still was a fair price, considering the money for Arla Malik not great big bet struck in the race people were watching out for the 1000 guineas they know a lot more about the first classic now well she was quite unflustered by having to be replated don't forget this is only her second public appearance on a race course although of course she is so to speak at home 
Nevertheless, there's absolutely no sign that there's anything wrong with her temperament. And who knows, maybe she will avenge the day when her son, Oref, who of course was a son of Northern Dancer, still is a son of Northern Dancer, the day when he won the 2,000 guineas on merit, but was found by the stewards to have interfered with known facts so culpably that they disqualified him. Graham, you have the time, I believe. A winning time for this Nelgren Stakes of 1 minute 31.69 seconds compares with the winning time of the previous race, the Geoffrey Barling Maiden Stakes of 1 minute 33.46. Just one little thing to bear in mind is that the winners of the Geoffrey Barling Maiden Stakes came up the stand side and the winner of the Sonic Lady came up on the far side. And let's take a check on the SP. First number 13, Sonic Lady, the 13 to 8 favourite. Second number 6, Lady Sophie, a 10 to 1. And third number 2, Alab Malik, 11 to 4. And the tape returns win £2.50, places £1.40, £1.10, and £1.90. And the dual forecast paid £9.20 and 9 rand.